Hi, this is Frank Carmody. Today we're going to take a look at using the pattern tools in our 2D sketches. So let's go ahead and create a new part file. I click the upside down triangle button and click part. And notice that we have our uh, part file opens. We click 2D sketch. We choose our plane for our 2D sketch. Now we're in 2D sketch mode. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and these are the pattern tools right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, the first thing we're going to do is make a, uh, a pattern of uh, circles. So we're going to make our circle. Oh, I forgot one thing. Uh, it's good policy when you first open a, a drawing to go ahead and save it right off the bat. So let's go ahead and click save. This is the save icon. You can also get to the save dialog by clicking on this yellow eye here and clicking save. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click the save icon. Click OK. It's going to take us out of 2D sketch mode. Okay, I already have my naming convention set up. Click save. Okay, now we're out of 2D sketch mode. So notice that um, my sketch, I don't see any of the grid lines. I don't see the grid line emanating from the origin there. I'm going to double click sketch one to get back into sketch. Okay, so notice that, notice what just happened there. Okay, so if I right click and click finish 2D sketch, I can get out of 2D sketch mode. Notice here on our uh, explore bar that sketch one is not highlighted. So we're going to double click sketch one again. <clears throat> okay, so we have our, remember we're making a pattern, so I've made my circle. Now I need two lines that are going to act as uh, the directions for my uh, sketch. Okay, so I make a, another line, click, move the mouse, click, right click, OK. Now we're going to click on the pattern tool. Okay, so notice that this is the, if I mouse over it and leave the mouse, notice I get to help, the help dialog. So I click on rectangular pattern. Okay, now Inventor follows a, a follows a, a rule when you're when you're using its controls. Okay, so when, it, when a dialog like this opens up, you have these arrows right here. Okay, so each of these arrows has to be used in order for the for you to be able to create your pattern or do whatever you're doing. So our first arrow is automatically highlighted. That's the geometry. So that's the uh, actual thing that we want to um, duplicate. Next is direction one. So we choose one of our lines for direction one. Next is direction two. We choose another line for direction two. Um, you can actually do it without choosing direction two, but let's just do direction two directions for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to make the spacing. Um, we can zoom out to actually see our pattern. Notice that now we have two in direction one, so that's one, two. Your original is included. Two in direction two, one, two. Your original is included there also. We can increase this uh, and notice that now we have four. Okay, notice the hand tool. I click the hand tool and drag my, you can drag your uh, um, canvas around. Okay, so we have our pattern. I go ahead and click OK. Now, Inventor is going to keep this pattern together. I can't go back in and edit the actual pattern, but it will keep the shapes together. Like I can move them. Okay, notice that I'm not in any tool while I'm doing this. When you're just out of, when you're just in the pointer tool, which is the default tool, you can move them around. You can grab one of the shapes and increase its size if it, if it allows you to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and use the next pattern tool. I'm going to go ahead and move my canvas up. I click the hand, move the canvas up. Uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a uh, another circle. Okay, it could be any shape. It doesn't have to be a circle. Um, and I'm going to make a point. That's the point about which I'm going to rotate the pattern. So I click uh, the circular pattern tool. Once again, I'm going to click the ge choose a geometry. So I choose my circle. That's what I want to duplicate. I can choose, then I choose the axis. So basically the axis is going to be um, a point, any point. It's, but in this case, I'm using the point that I made. Okay, now notice, oops. Now notice what happened there. What happened was I had already chosen another circle in, in the other pattern and basically my pattern's all messed up. So at this point I want to go ahead and cancel it. Okay, I want to make sure that I click off anything else that might have already been selected. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click circular pattern again. Notice that the geometry arrow is red as it should be. I click the circular pattern. I choose the point I want to rotate it around and notice I get six 
circles rotated around the point. Now this is the direction that the pattern is going. So let's say I made two circles. Okay, they'd be equally spaced. Six would be equally spaced. Let's say I only want to go 90 degrees instead of 360 though. Okay, so that would be a quarter of the way around the circle obviously. Okay, now, but let's say I, instead of going this direction, counterclockwise, I want to go clockwise. I would click the axis and that changes the direction of the rotation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now for this type of pattern, um, just like the rectangular pattern, uh, Inventor uh, maintains that pattern as, a, as one, you know, one group of objects. Okay, so finally let's go ahead and do the mirror. Okay, now mirror can act in a couple of different ways. So let's take the example of using a rectangle and a line outside of that rectangle. And notice I'm not dimensioning here. That's only for the speed of uh, the speed of doing the actual video. Uh, you should dimension all of these objects. Okay, every circle, every everything is it's a final object should be dimensioned. Okay, so we're going to be pattern. We're going to use the mirror pattern this time. So we have the rectangle. We have a line outside the rectangle. Okay, so we're going to click mirror. Oops. <clears throat> we're going to click oh mirror choose the geometry. Now in this case we have to choose each line that we want to mirror. Then we're going to choose our mirror line. And we click apply. And notice it mirrored it right over the line. And done. Okay, now in the case of mirroring though, these objects are not... Um, oh, they are actually. So we have our mirror line. Notice if I move the mirror line I can move that object around. If I change one object, it will change the object on the other side. Now I can delete that mirror line. Oops. I can delete the mirror line, in which case that will break the connection between the between the mirrored objects. Okay. All right. Let's take another case for this mirroring. I'm going to um, go ahead and just move the canvas up and just keep working. So let's say I have a more complicated object. Let's say I have a rectangle. Let's say I have a circle. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use the trim tool over here on the modify menu. So if I click trim, I can go ahead and trim out lines. So notice when I highlight, when I mouse over one of these lines, part of the line will, uh, will become dotted. That part, if I click it, will be deleted. So I can go through here and notice that I trim out these lines and create this kind of complicated shape. Now, an interesting thing about mirroring is that you can actually mirror on the object itself. So if I select lines that I want to mirror, okay, then finally select the mirror line as part of the object, I can get this nice uh, mirrored object here. And notice that now that I'm outside of the tool, I can actually change the, the size and it will remain mirrored. Okay. All right, so those are the pattern tools. Uh, so go ahead and uh, do your best to, uh, to exercise those pattern tools. Remember that although I did not dimension this video, you should be dimensioning every single object. Uh, good luck.